Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. My name is Reagan. if you are new here. So I do all things clean beauty, green beauty on this channel. So if you're into that, click the subscribe button down below. And today's video is a little bit different. So I saw, I think I saw Jackie Anna do this in the past. She might not have. She might not have. I know for a fact though that Samantha Ravindal does these kind of videos and it's where she goes through and talks about um, the ratings of products at Sephora and her thoughts on those ratings. And I thought this would be kind of fun because I've tried basically most clean makeup products at Sephora. They don't have tons and tons. They only have Ilia, Aether, Kosas, and... Tower 28, I believe, Color Cosmetics Wise. Those are brands that I support at least that they have. They also have a couple other brands that are questionably like if I would use that or not. It, it isn't even about the cleanness. It's more just about like, I don't want to use that brand. In some ways it's related to like the brand's ethos. In other ways it's related to, I don't like the product. When I first started my channel, I tried a bunch of different stuff and some of the brands I was just like, this is crap. So I stopped buying. I usually don't trust one and five star reviews. I think they can usually be a little bit biased. I think you usually get the real meat and the three and the four star reviews. That's just me, maybe. Um, five star reviews can sometimes be really helpful, but sometimes it's people being really enthusiastic about product. Uh, then one star reviews, usually people just being super negative for whatever reason. So that's usually what I look for is the, you know, kind of in between reviews. Cause I feel like people who do three or four star reviews really take the time to explain why. I know that sounds very odd, but I am just going to read the ranking of the product, what people have said. I also thought this would be interesting because this is Sephora. This isn't a store that specifically sells clean beauty. A lot of the customers at Sephora also use conventional products. So they're comparing conventional products, a lot of them, to their clean products. And it's kind of just interesting how people think stuff stacks up. So I did pull a lot of the things I'm going to be talking about today just so I can, I guess, hold it physically in my hand awkward as I read off the reviews. I don't know why I did that, but I did. So yeah, one thing before we roll into this, I did want to mention because when I was researching for this, making sure I pulled the right products for these brands, I didn't read any of the reviews though. I wanted to give you guys my first impressions on that. Is that Sephora has a new Sephora Favorites clean makeup set. And I actually think this is a really good deal. It's $29 and you get a couple of my favorite products. Some of the things kind of suck. I'm not, I'm, <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't say they suck, but some of the things I'm not interested in at all. I'm not personally buying this because everything that's in this that I would want, I already have. But I wanted to tell you guys about it because I think that $29 is a really super good deal. And I want to talk about the products I have that I like from it uh, and do some swatches and stuff so you guys know. So you get a Kosa Sport Lip Fuel Hyaluronic Lip Balm in the shade Pulse. I have this. I love it. I think it's great. It has really pigmented, um, super moisturizing, and just a really great tinted lip balm. I was super impressed with this product. And then you get a full size of the Ilia Beauty Color Haze Multi Matte Pigment in Before Today. I have really liked this as well. This is a true eyes, lips, cheeks, multi-use product. Um, it's pretty creamy actually on the lips and it's really pigmented on the cheeks as well. A little of this goes a long way. I have loved this. So you get this exact same one in this kit and I believe these two products together totally cover the $29. So it makes it worth it. I believe even this one costs above $29. So that's a thing. And then you also get the Rose Quartz shade, which is this one right here from the Rose Quartz Aether Beauty Palette, but you just get this one shade. And I do like this color. I think it's pretty. I'll just show a swatch so you can see. Um, but those are the three products. I was like, oh, that would be what would make me buy this, but I already have them. So I want to tell you about it because again, 29 bucks, pretty good deal. All right. So the first product, let's start out with bases. Let's do concealers. Okay, so the first concealer I'm going to talk with you guys about is the Kosas Revealer Concealer Super Creamy Brightening Concealer. This is $28 full size. It comes in 16 shades. So I have the shade 01. I don't believe they've done any shade expansion or I would say reduction, but just I don't think they'd take shades out. My personal thoughts on this, because I'm just going to give you them, this isn't an absolute fave of mine. I actually think the consistency of it's really nice, but 
The pale shade they have is more yellow in tone and I've talked with other friends in the community and they all feel like it's a lot more yellow in undertone. So that's just kind of a thought. So we're going to read some of the reviews. So the first person, Blackbird1218, gives this a three star review. She says that this is a beautiful concealer in terms of finish and coverage. My under eyes are usually dry, which is weird because I have oily skin. It's literally just the color. It's on the yellow side. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Considering they labeled the shade as neutral, Kosas, please fix, please fix the shades. Otherwise, amazing concealer. I would agree with that. I actually, you know, three stars are pretty good, you know, rating, actually. I know that all brands want to get five star reviews, but just that really does give me information. Like it does run more yellow and she used tone number two. So I have tone number one. So that's saying that both of their pale shades are more yellow in tone. So let's read on. Okay. This person got tone one as well. I love this concealer, but the top crack and half after, but the top cracked in half after a month. I never dropped it or anything. I just went to screw the lid back on and it completely came apart. So it gets negative two for awful packaging, but three stars for formulation. Okay. Like, you know, that's what it is. I have nothing to say. Like, yeah, I've had faulty packaging before. I get that. You know, that's a thing. All right. Interesting. So yellow. This is a two star review from Hannah Papp. So she has a medium skin tone and dry skin. So she wanted to love this concealer so badly, but it was so yellow on me. Yes, yes. I don't feel so alone in reading this. I also didn't like that it clings to my dry patches. I would love to try it again someday if they tweak the formulation and color. So I personally don't think this is bad for people with dry skin. That's me personally. I, I don't have the dry skin. I do feel like it is pretty creamy though, but you know, she said what she said, so I'm not going to judge her on it. I want to find people who got the darker shade of this because everyone I'm reading got tone one or tone three. So I want to find some people who got like the deeper tones because I want to see if it was yellow undertone for them as well. Sephora is so clever with this. They actually let you like pick that, whatever the deeper tone is. So the deeper tone is Tin natural. Okay, interesting. They did do some like 9.5s, 10. So it's 16 shades, but it goes from 1 to 10, and then there's some 0.5s in between. Okay, a lot of the deeper skin tones are giving this better reviews. Just doing a little scroll through ski, I'm seeing four and five stars. So some people put pictures. I don't want to put other people's pictures on this video and make them feel awkward if they run across. That's I'm not going to. Um, this person says. She was the shade Tone 9. This product is described as being deep dark with mauve undertones. I did not see a deep dark shade with yellow undertones, but this one worked very well. I use this product as a contour shade. I believe this shade worked very well as a soft glamour natural look contour bronzing color. This concealer is not too thick or too watery. It blends out very well. And she gave it a five star review. So yeah, you know. She said what she said. And then another girl said she was shade 9.5. She gave this five star review. Honestly, I received this concealer as a complimentary gift from influencer. I need to get on this influencer stuff. I didn't know that was the kind of thing you got. I paid for this. Um, and it's one of the best I've tried so far. I would recommend it to anyone interested in a natural finish. 9.5 matches my complexion perfectly as natural as it looks. There's a huge difference between the side that I applied it and the natural side. I love it. Okay, cool, cool. I wanna see if there's some one star reviews. A lot of the deeper skin tones really like this product. So again, like I said, with the threes, that's the threes and the fours are usually where I go for like the real information. Cause I feel again, like those people write out a lot more. So this girl, her name's Coco Storm. She used tone 10. She gave this a three star review. I received this product for free to review. My initial thoughts was the packaging was cute. Eh, I think it is kind of cute. I do think one of the things I think is kind of weird about Kosas and I'll talk about this and it's like, eh, but their lipsticks packaged like this, like really sleek. And then this is really fun. That's something I've heard a lot of people mention that it's kind of weird how they've switched their branding, but haven't switched everything. After removing it from the packaging, I was disappointed by the shade. I got a 10 thinking that I would use it as a contour. It is way lighter than it seems online. When picking my shade, I had to choose from the color swatches. So I was not able to see the actual picture of the product. Yes, that's something I think is very important is when brands actually use 
real models to not just swatch the product, but blend it in on their skin, like put it on half of their face and not half or take a picture with them without it on and then with it on. I like that kind of marketing. I don't really like the swatches marketing as much for shade tones. I think it's good for eyeshadows, I, shade tones. For bases, I just think that you really need to see it on. Hey guys, this is a letter from the editor. I have a fan blowing in my face and I also have a bunch of different plushes on because I was testing them and I wasn't expecting to pop on here. But I also think that because she got this flu through a influencer type program that they were the ones who only sent swatches instead of like a maybe pictures of the tones of this, if that makes sense. Like they only sent an arm swatch and we're like, oh, pick between all of these. And that's kind of hard to pick, you know? When I picked my shade, I had to choose from the color swatches, so I was not able to see the actual picture of the product. In these pictures, you can even tell that they clearly so not match the swatches below. After getting past the shade I swatched, the product, and it was very creamy and reminded me of the Tarte concealer, but a little less tacky. I really was impressed by the quality of the product, and I used it as a concealer instead, and it worked out fine. I would definitely use it again as a concealer, but they need to update the color swatches because this product does not really accommodate deep, dark skin tones at all. So again, that's why I like to read the three and the four star reviews because I really feel like you get information from those. And then the Ilia one. Let's talk about this one. I believe that I bought my Ilia concealer from Sephora actually. So their gradient is okay-ish. It's not amazing. And I look at gradient and I also look at how many shades they have. So they have way less than Kosas. They have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So they have much less. So this actually gets a four star review overall. So I have shade 0 0.05 Arrowroot and we're going to see what other people say about this exact shade that I have. Okay, so this girl, B.A. D reviews gave this a two star review and she says that it goes on smoothly but it's drying and sets into pores and creases. I didn't really have that experience so she actually has a pretty similar coloring to myself. She's fair, she has dry skin, she's blonde but she has hazel eyes. Um, for myself I didn't really have that experience with it. I like this concealer. Um, I didn't have the settling. I didn't have it really clinging to my pores and my creases very much. I've tried other things that I think are much drier. So I just, you know, she said what she said, but I actually have liked this. Then I want to read a five star review to see what this person said, because this person actually wrote out a long one. I've always had a complicated relationship with concealer. I know I need it because my under eyes are a mess, but concealers I've tried in the past were either been too sheen in coverage or too cakey. I agree with that. That is something about conventional concealers. At long last, though, I finally found the one. This concealer manages to cover up my dark circles while looking unbelievably natural. It's so easy to apply and it blends perfectly into my usual foundation. And as I've been trying to introduce all clean products into my makeup routine, I'm so glad I found this brand. We'll definitely be purchasing more from Ilia in the future. Okay, cool. All right, and then we're gonna read a three star review to finish out the light shade. So this person said they have blonde hair, blue eyes, porcelain skin, combination skin. They give this a three star review. They say it's a really great coverage under eyes. However, if used anywhere else in the face cells and the pores so much that it made me look far more aged, I'm 30. Had to put moisturizer all over the face area. I used it on to smooth it out, quick fix, then reapply makeup all over again. So for me personally, I'll say this. I always start out with like really moisturized skin, so I can't speak from the perspective maybe she is where I really do have, you know, I come with like an oil or a moisturizer always on my skin. So yeah, maybe that is a thing with it. I haven't tried it just plain face because I always truly will use something underneath my skin. Let's go to some of the deeper shades and see what they have to say. So three star review, the title is Good Not Great and they had shade SC8. So I think this concealer complements the serum foundation great. With that said, there are some problems like with the foundation I've experienced using it. The main one, the movement of the product once applied. You will have to set this one without question. Not a huge inconvenience, but if you're a minimalist, it could be a hassle. The product is clean, lightweight, and has a good finish, so it's not a total best. Just wish it stayed put better. I received this free for product sampling. So my thoughts on that, I do always use a setting powder. I mean, it's a very rare concealer that I don't use a setting powder. I'll just name a couple. The Kiara Weiss one, the new one, I don't use a setting powder with. And then 
the Fit Glow one, I feel like you don't need to use, which both of those brands are not carried at Sephora, but I just wanted to mention that if anyone's wondering. Okay, so only one person has tried the deepest shade of it. They gave it a five-star review. So they said that they received this product complimentary from Influencer. I need to get on this. I like this concealer and it's not drying. It is also moisturizing and I feel like the ingredients are good for my skin since it's been so hot this summer. I have used this instead of foundation to cover up the spots on my face. A little goes a long way. Okay, so overall this did get a four star review and I would agree with that. To get a five star review, I feel like you have to be like awesome. And for some people, this was really good. I was looking through the number of stars people were giving this and a lot of people were giving this five star, but I do feel like I've tried better concealers than this. Let's just say that. I truly have. Can I still think this is a good one? Heck yes, and I do think it's a good one. I would recommend it and I have liked it. All right, so I did decide to pull the Tower 28. This is their lip jelly. I used this last week. This is in the shade Spicy. Very interesting. Out of 420 reviews, this product got almost five stars. I don't really agree with that. I like this, but I think it's more of a four star product. I'm only going to read the reviews of people who tried this spicy shade. I'm not gonna read about the other ones because I haven't tried them. Okay, this person left a four star review and they said, I tend to use more glosses in the summer, so I had to try this. I like the clear, unique packaging and how hydrating my lips felt anytime I used it. I chose this shade spicy, a red, almost sheer hue that you can build up for extra glossy, juicy lips or wear over lipstick for some added shine oomph. It has a slight scent to it. Did I? Yeah, it does, but it fades. It's also not too sticky and even lasts through some snacking. I definitely recommend. I think that's really good. Like, I think that's a really good review of this. She gave it four stars. I would actually agree with four stars over a five star. It's not super sticky. It does last a bit. It kind of looks like by itself you just ate a popsicle on top of a lipstick. You can kind of turn like a matte lipstick into a glossy lip product, but I wouldn't give this more than four star. I would only really give this four stars. I think it's good. I just don't think that it's like amazing. It is $14 too. So I think that also kind of helps. They gave this a four star review and they said gorgeous pigmented color, but not so special of a formula. They've been looking for a red lip gloss recently and wanted to try this hyped product. So they decided to purchase the shade spicy. It's such a pretty shade, definitely sheer than shown on the model, but it's, yeah, I agree. I actually do think it's much sheer, but it's a lovely soft cherry tint that can be built up to slightly more, uh, oh, Pixity. This is impressively pigmented for a gloss and I believe spicy is the most opaque shade in the range which is why I was drawn to it. I find that when I first apply this to my lips start to tingle a bit but the feeling goes away quickly. Other than that, this is such a comfortable gloss, not sticky at all, but it doesn't last very long. Even if I'm not eating or drinking much, it starts to fade after about an hour of wear. It also tends to sink into the lines of my lips though it's not very noticeable. It does moisturize the lips nicely but not any better than the Fenty or Marc Jacobs glosses, which I also love. Overall, I would recommend this product because I love this shade Spicy, but I don't think I'll be picking up more because the other shades are sheer and I prefer other formulas that are more juicy and plumping. I think if a shade speaks, you definitely go for it, but this is not a revolutionary lip gloss formula in my opinion. Yeah, I would actually in some ways agree with her. I've liked it enough. I just really think it's like, she gave it four stars. I would give it four stars too. I think she kind of said what she said and I agree with some of the things for sure. So this is the last review I'm gonna do of this, but they said that this is a three star review, not bad, but not their favorite. So this person said, if you love the glassy line filling mirror shine of Glossier lip gloss, this one is not for Q. It's a nice basic lip gloss, but it doesn't fill in the lines of my lips and it doesn't give me that Glossier high shine that I love. Also not a fan of the color. It's a weird orangey red that isn't fluttering on my light skin. I have dark hair and dark eyes. If you've tried Glossier and weren't impressed, you may love this. So that's something. I haven't really tried much from Glossier, so I don't have anything else to say about this. Overall, I would agree that I think this is like a three to four star review, four star being very generous. I don't think this warrants the almost five star review it has on this website, on this website, on Sephora's website. Okay, and then I have this Kosas lipstick. I actually bought this at Sephora when I was, what did I purchase? I purchased something and I needed to meet the minimum shipping threshold, so I picked this. So this is the Kosas Royal lipstick. I actually have liked this shade. It's a little bit more purple. It's a cool toned rich berry. So let's look at the reviews. Overall, their lipsticks get a four and a half star review. 
I would agree. I think they have a really good formulation. This is one of my favorite Kosas products. Although I have tried most of the shades of the Kosas lipstick, I'm only going to be reading the reviews of Royal because it's the one that I have here. This is the reason I don't like to read the one star reviews because this one got a one star review and they just said like labeled wrong, believe this was labeled wrong. There's no plum or purple undertone or a berry looks more orangey, not even a coral. Gonna order from Kosas and see what happens. Usually it's someone who got the wrong thing or something. So they're not even really giving a review of the exact product. I mean, that stuff happens. I hate when it happens. It's happened to me before where I've gotten a box and stuff hasn't been in it, things like that, but it doesn't really make it like a valid review that I would base my consumption off of. So there's not that many reviews of this shade. Overall, there's a one, a three, we'll read the three and four stars. They say that it is four stars and a luxurious natural beauty. Kosas lipsticks are very nice and creamy, but very lightweight, agreed. Easy to do a sheer wash, I think they meant sheer, they put sheet, wash of color or a fully opaque lip. Yes, agreed with that. I love the ingredients and vanilla scent. They make the higher price point worth it. I bought mine a while back and the packaging unfortunately broke, but I believe they have since updated the packaging and I haven't heard of anyone else having that problem. So yeah, I mean, you know, that's totally valid. I get why she kind of knocked a star off of this because if my packaging broke, I probably wouldn't be very happy about it. So that's a thing for sure. But I do agree with a lot of what she said. I do like that you can make this more of a stain or more opaque. I actually like the kind of vanilla scent to it. And I think they're really pretty. Um, yeah. And then let's do one more of this. There's not a lot of reviews. And they also got the shade Royal and they gave it three stars. They said, been coveting this for a while, but I was surprised that it didn't quite live up to the hype. I didn't find it to be as moisturizing as claimed. Color range is nice, but ultimately these lipsticks weren't that special. Also, I realized the sheer or lipsticks was much more opaque. Um, I really think with these, you, I don't really agree as much with some of that. I do think that you can build them all up. I've tried them all and I have tried this. I have this, I'm holding it, duh. But you can make this pretty opaque. I can see where some people might think that they don't live up to the hype where, do I think this is like the only lipstick anyone should ever buy? No, I've tried a lot of really good ones. I think Red Apple Lipstick Company, they're a smaller brand, has some really good ones and they're really under hyped. I do think Kosas gets a lot of hype in general in clean beauty because they're at Sephora. I mean, just straight up, they are. Okay, and then I wanted to, lastly but not leastly, let's read some reviews of what people have to say about the Joshua Tree palette from Aether. This palette is very interesting. It doesn't have tons of reviews. It has 29 reviews on here. It has a one star, a three star, and a bunch of five stars. Okay, let's find a couple of three star reviews. I actually have really liked this palette. I think it's super pretty. And it's kind of when you first see it, it's kind of a weird shade range because it's just all mattes, but I love it. I just love it. I think it's beautiful. And the pigment's really good. Three star review, Muddy Colors. I love the Summer Solstice palette, which is gorgeous. And this color story really called out to me. So I bought it on a whim from the Aether website. The colors that I was most excited for, the purples, blues, and greens are sadly pretty muddy when applied. The neutrals are very nice, but I have plenty that are comparable. And I was disappointed in the application of some of the more vibrant shades. It's definitely still workable and I'll be keeping it, but I think there are better palettes out there, including from the same brand. Interesting. Okay, so my thoughts, I'll be straight up. I basically don't venture into like this, these four shades up here. I'm using everything that's a little bit lighter down here. So, you know, that's a thing. Maybe they are a little bit more muddy and I can definitely see where these deeper shades, I only have used the black shade that's kind of like a black matte as an eyeliner and it works fine that way. But I could see where maybe they could be a little bit more muddy because they're deeper colors. But these lighter ones, the ones in the middle, I actually have really liked. So that's just my thoughts. Um, I haven't really experienced them being super muddy or anything personally. So then this one is a one star review. So let's read this. So they said that they love Aether Beauty. This is the only eyeshadow that does not irritate her eyes. But this palette, man, the colors are beautiful, but it started to fade in a couple of minutes of you putting it on. I tried the light green and dark green shades again. I think she's talking about these two. These just aren't shades I would use personally. They're not ones I uh, one, but she said that she was the most excited about, but it started disappearing. So she wet the brushes and tried them, but, uh, it would give so much fallout under the eyes. If you're thinking about getting it, it may work for you. We are all different and I love the brand. So try it out. Just didn't work for me. So I can see where if you only bought this for these two green shades, you might be disappointed. Again, I purchased it truly for like kind of more these shades up in here. So 
you know, to each their own. Like she said, you may love this. I have loved this. Okay, and then I found one five star that we'll read. So they give this a five star review and they say it's a rare find that hits all the marks. So this person said, I've always loved the Natasha Denona Safari palette and concept, but the colors were hard to blend. The ingredients contain weird stuff like carmine, crushed up beetles, yuck. When I tried the Joshua Tree palette, I was so pleasantly surprised. Mats can be really tricky. I agree, they can be really tricky. These colors can also be really tricky, but this palette nails it. It's so much fun to work with, and I feel like there are so many options. When I start with a lot of palettes, I realize there are really only a few ways to wear it. This one has so many options that you'll never run out of ideas. This is definitely an underappreciated palette. I agree. Um, I like it because it's so different. I actually do wish, like, maybe these two green shades that I don't use were, like, shimmers and that's a personal thing because I just don't use those shades. I would probably give this a four star review. I think the formulation's beautiful. I think the color story is beautiful. It's definitely different than anything that we've really seen in Clean Beauty but I don't think this is just my favorite one ever so I agree with what a lot of the people were saying that it is really pretty and unique. I can also totally see where this palette would not be everyone's cup of tea because they are very unique shades where you have to like to play with color to really want to use it. Alrighty guys, so let me know your thoughts on this. Um, if you've tried any of these products, I was going to do like a ton of products, but then I kind of realized as I got talking, well, I don't want this video to be 45 hours. So we just did five. If you really enjoyed this, I might come back and do some more and maybe I'll do it for different stores that have more brands. So let me know your thoughts down below and thank you guys so much for stopping by the channel. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful, wonderful day or evening wherever you are in the world.